In this video, we're going to cover how to generate contracts, invoices from any DocX template that can be created inside of Microsoft Office or Google Docs. We're going to grab the data in the JSON format from any data source, merge the data into the template inside of our React app, completely client-side without any server-side dependencies. First, I'm going to show you a quick demo of what I mean, and then we're actually going to go ahead and jump into the implementation. Let's get started. All right, first things first, let's take a look at the demo. You can find this demo off our website, pdftron.com, if you just go under documentation and inside of documentation web and click on the samples, advanced, and then launch demo. You can also find the source code. I will be posting the source code to the GitHub application that we're building, again, in the comments of the video, so do check it out. Um, so if I click launch demo, we're gonna go ahead and see here now, I have a contract in front of me that has placeholder strings. And as you can see, let's go ahead and fit it to width of the document. As you can see that they're just um, curly brackets or squiggly brackets or mustache braces. I've heard a number of different ways to refer to them. If you have a preferred way, do let me know in the comments below. Um, and as we can see that we have a placeholder for the logo, we have date, uh, destination given name, uh, surname, street address, uh, title as well as their surname and their sender name. Web viewer component can be embedded inside of your application. We have built out a small POC. Of course, your data is going to come from a data source. However, we do automatic detection of those fields. This is just the docx templates that have been uploaded. We can also do pptx, xlx, so you know your word files, your PowerPoint, or your Excel files. And then we do automatic detection of all the different placeholder fields with those uh, squiggly brackets. And then we can go ahead and enter any information that we want. So for example, date, let's go and serve today's date. Today is November uh, 5th and it's 2021. So we've got Janice living at 187. Can't even say that name. Um, same thing with a surname, maybe Simon's. Miss and 225 Park Saint Rochelle, Quebec. And there's also some kind of lease problem. And we're gonna go ahead and insert a logo. Now, this is just a relative path to our image and as well as providing some of the properties like width and height of the image. And the sender name is Arnold Smith. So we're gonna go ahead and hit submit. And as you can see, instantaneously, we went ahead and did the data merging. Again, there was no trip to the server. Everything happened client side in the browser. And as you can see, we were able to grab the logo and kind of place it where we uh, this, you know, originally thought it's gonna go. We also preserve all the different styling. So as you see, the Janice and Simons is bolded. Uh, the November 5th style of the data is slightly different as well. And uh, our name is bolded as well. And as you can see that the content here reflowed. So what I mean by the content reflow is that if we have any content that's larger than our original placeholder, it's not going to run into the content on top of each other. It's actually going to go ahead and just ensure that it's going to reflow and push all the text kind of down so there's no collisions. And now what I can do is go ahead and download this and it's going to go ahead and download in a PDF format. So now I have a PDF that has all the data inside of it and can no longer modi be modified. So I can send it out in an email or whatever bad job I'm setting up. Now the next step, let's go ahead and build something similar, except doing the letter. Let's actually do more of a real life use case here and do an invoice. And then inside of it, we're gonna have a table with multiple roles. And let's see what happens when we insert so much data that it has to go to the page two. Let's go ahead and generate a sales quote. So in front of me, inside of Google Docs, I created this document. Actually, I didn't create it. I just took it from existing template. And all I had to do is just replace or add the squiggly brackets or the mustache brackets around the company name, company address lines. Uh, I added customer names as well, dates and expiry dates. And for the table, uh, it's a very simple table. It has three columns or uh, sorry, four columns inside of it. Uh, with the build items that we're going to be kind of placing for this and we have a total. Also it has a sum of the subjects to use as well 
Again, the company name is mentioned here a couple of times, so it's just a single placeholder. There's also a website. Again, the formatting here doesn't really matter. And as long as you use kind of double squiggly brackets, you can also go ahead and use a different separator. And there's an API that you can actually go ahead and swap out for uh, instead of using just so you don't have to, let's say you have an existing templates and so you don't have to kind of go back and uh, replace them all. And then we'll also have agreed and accepted name, title, and a date um, for signing. So then let's go ahead and I'll kind of walk you through. So again, this is just building up on top of our existing WebViewer React sample that we have on our GitHub. Um, and what I prepared is I prepared JSON data for all the different uh, kind of placeholder items. So company name, customer names, address lines, dates, expired dates, the quote number, the website, the build items. And inside of the build items, as you can see, we're doing insert roles and I'm passing it an array consisting of an additional array for kind of every single row. And here we have the four items inside of it for the four columns. We have three apples for five bucks. Um, well, actually, let's fix the math here. With the math now fixed, let's go ahead and kind of finish walking through. So we have three apples, five bucks, 15 bucks total, oranges, two for five bucks. By the way, very expensive apples, very expensive oranges. And the total was 25 and we have 30 days to pay it. Okay, let's take a look what it looks like inside of the code. So inside of the use effect that kind of executes once, we'll have our web viewer initialized and we're going to be loading up that quote.docx that we just downloaded from the Google Docs uh, that I just generated. And inside of it, we're waiting for the document to be fully loaded. After it is fully loaded, we're going to go ahead and just apply the template value from the JSON data. Now, it is possible as well to automatically detect all the different keys. And let's say based on the keys on the document, you can then perform the necessary queries. So the workflow here could look like that. We we'll go ahead, we load up the template, get the keys from it, find all the relevant keys that we need to be querying our database for, get the data, and then build the JSON and apply the template values. Now let's flip over to the React app. And here we see that we have all the different fields that are populated. So we'll have the company name, we'll have the address, we have the quote number, the prepare date, the expire date, um, my name and address. Uh, we have the quantity of apples um, with the correct totals, uh, kind of rolling up to the 25 bucks. We also kind of put in the different subjects for the 30 days uh, delivered by the PDF front facility. Here's our website that people can go to and it's automatically linked. So if I click it, boom, we're at pdftron.com. Um, and there is agreed and accepted. Now here, you know, this is a PDF that we could send it out, but there's no interactivity yet. So we can actually go ahead and just flip on over to the forms tab where I can define the areas where I want someone to go ahead and insert their name. I can also, and I can call this form field name here, I can go ahead and set the different field flags if I wish, maybe read only, maybe multiplying or required. Go ahead and press OK and press OK. Now, one other thing that's actually missing, maybe a signature block right here. So we're going to go ahead and define the area where the user can sign um, somewhere here. And we're going to go ahead and say sign. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and apply fields. And after we hit apply, as you can see, this document is not just the sales quote with pre-populated numbers inside of them, but actually has a signature block that we can go ahead and sign. And we can kind of fill in our name, title, um, and date. So let's actually take a look and see what happens if we're going to go ahead and overflow this table and how the, all the contents are going to reflow. So let's say in here, I'm just going to go ahead and instead of just getting apples and oranges, and by the way, let's go ahead and format it. So it reads a little bit easier. Um, we're going to just insert this whole bunch of rows for oranges. And it did. 
As you can see here, um, we inserted crazy amount of rows and the table is dynamic. And as you can see that it intelligently recreated the header for the specific table and inserted the items, pushed the content down and created any additional pages as needed without any collision inside of it. And this was happening extremely fast right inside of our React app. Well, that's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do reach out if you have any questions in the comments below. I'm really responsive. Thanks so much.